What's up guys, this is Chase with AGM. So if you're not familiar with the brand, um, we are a big thermal and night vision manufacturer, right? So we do thermal imaging and multiple different platforms. We also do traditional tube night vision, right? So uh, Gen 2, Gen 3, goggles, monoculars. So we do a little bit of everything, but this video is specifically aimed at some of our newest thermal scopes called the Rattler V3 series. If you are an AGM customer or follower or owner, you're obviously gonna be familiar with, with one of the two platforms you may already own. So this basically video is basically just say what's new with the new Rattler V3 series. So we introduced the Rattler V2s. It's probably one of the best selling product families on the market. We introduced these at SHOT Show in January of 2024. It is some of the first units out there with sub 20 millikelvin thermal sensitivity in the sensor. Um, a new battery system, right? New controls, an updated user interface over the original Rattlers, um, um, better displays, you name it, right? Updated algorithm. And now we're actually uh, roughly around that two year mark and we're introducing a new Rattler V3 series. So Rattler V2 owners, if you've bought a Rattler V2, keep in mind Rattler V2s are not going anywhere, right? They're completely unique. They're, um, you know, they're at different price points than the V3s. These have a lot of updated electronics, sensors, displays, and all that that we'll talk about. And that's why they'll obviously sell it at, you know, three, four or five hundred dollar different price points because of all the new features and upgrades you're getting in the V3s. But right now the V2s are not going anywhere. Um, we'll probably sell these through at least early, maybe mid 2026 at the, at the, at the worst. So, but right now with V3 specifically, if you're familiar with the v Rattler V2s or you've already owned a Rattler V2, what's new with the Rattler V3? Why does it sold, you know, at a, at a higher price point? Well, there's a lot of reasons. So the main ones are, let's talk about some of the biggest. The biggest one is obviously the update to the thermal sensor. These, all the Rattler V3s come with a sub 15 millikelvin thermal sensitivity. It's the best thermal sensitivity you can get out on the commercial market right now. Um, that just means I'm picking up more detail on the image for the same lens size and same resolution that I would in an older model, right? So it's got the best thermal sensor, sub 15 millikelvin, which many of you are already familiar with in our Adder V2 series, which is our 30 millimeter tube style, right? So these will all be sub 15 millikelvin. That's the biggest one. They'll also have much larger, higher resolution displays, right? So back here in the eyepiece, all of our Rattler V2s use 1024 resolution displays. And our Rattler V3s, there's four models total and we'll have two different displays in the 640s versus the 384. So there's four models total, two 640s and two 384s. The 640 units will use 2560 displays. The 384s will use 1920 displays. So still either way, quite a bit of an upgrade over the, the 1084s and the Rattler V2s or 1024s, I'm sorry. Um, but that's the, so you've got the more thermal sensor, the more sensitive thermal sensor. You've got the upgraded high resolution displays. And what that does is it changes the mathematics, which we've talked about a little bit in other videos, and it raises your base magnification up, right? So whereas two, two and a half was pretty standard in a lot of the Rattler V2s, now, depending on the math and depending on the model, you're gonna be anywhere from like two and a half all the way up to three and a half on the 384 series on the 35 millimeter um, in the Rattler V2s, right? So high resolution display, better thermal sensitivity on the actual thermal sensor itself. Another big one obviously is the end lens uh, laser rangefinder, right? So three of the four models will have the new end lens LRF, right? And these have full ballistic calculators, thousand yard laser rangefinder. There's no external knobs or housings to house that. It's all a sleek one design um, and the same footprint basically as a Rattler V2, right? Subtle differences in your focus wheel. So it takes the same ADM 2120 mount, American made mount, ship with all of our devices. Um, and this will ship in the Rattler V3s as well. These are also the first, so we've been selling the Rattler V3 50 millimeter 640 for about three, four months already. Now that the other three models of the family have come on, these are the first ones on the market to be a, have a 35 millimeter lens with an in-lens LRF, right? So that's the first ones in a compact housing having the in-lens LRF and now especially in that 35 millimeter lens configuration. There will also be the entry level, I guess you'd call it 25 millimeter model in the 3D4 resolution will not, will be the only one without an LRF, right? So it'll be just like the Rattler V2s, standard housings, no in-lens LRF. And that is basically just to kind of create some price separation between the 35 millimeter um, and it's just a more aggressively priced unit with higher base mag and those higher resolution displays with the better sensor, right? So you've got the better thermal sensor, higher resolution displays, the built-in laser rangefinder, the ballistic calculator. They're also all completely shutterless nuke, right? So the days of your image 
getting a countdown on the screen and your image kind of freezes up to kind of do that non-uniform correction on the image to clear up your image. This is all happening algorithmically in the device, right? So that will all happen in the V3s, just like our Adder V2, our, our Adder V2 series. Um, that's all happening inside the device and you won't see that freezing up of the image. That's great for guys that are familiar with thermal for the last decade. Um, that's very new. Some guys have that on a couple models, but I'm not aware of any that have it across like entire product families yet. So that's big on the, um, the Rattler V3 series as well. And uh, there's all times of upgrades, obviously in your ballistic calculation with your BDC, with your angle correction, dis angle corrected distance, um, uh, just updates to the user interface. These are also got the circular display, which you see in the Adder V2 series rather than your traditional rectangular displays. Well, in the 384 specifically, and that's because with the 1920 display, we could do it. We couldn't make it work with the 2560 because it was so much wider. With the 1920 displays in the 384 series, you can actually, there's a setting within the menu and you can change it between semicircular and rectangular. So your widest point of the field of view between your circular or your rectangular doesn't really change much. But as you make that circular curvature, that you see through tra like traditional rifle scopes, you can in the upper left and right hand corners and bottom left and right hand corners, you know, you'll get a little more of the image there. Some guys don't mind it. They just want your, you know, your straight horizontal distance across to be the same and they don't care about the corners. Um, it's completely a preference thing. So when you change that in the setting, you can change that in the 384s. I believe that's the first unit in the market um, that's ever had that capability to change the actual configuration of the display. So that's a cool little setting on the 384 side. Um, and that's it. So we'll go into more detail with, uh, with some other videos and just go through all the firmware. We will produce not only an image comparison video, but we'll also do a full menu walkthrough like we do with all the product families. And in that you'll see, you know, there's tons of other little firmware improvements there that we'll go over. It'll also, due to these new high resolution displays, it gave us the ability to do new red monochrome and green monochrome. The guys in the Adder V2 series that have been playing with those, love those. The main reason for producing those was if you've ever sat behind the eyepiece for long periods of time, right? If you're hunting regularly or you go with, you know, whether outfitters that are taking guys out on time, when you're behind something all the time in white hot or black hot, it can strain the eye a little bit. And then you get some of that night blindness when you come off the device. But with these new units with that red and green monochrome, just due to its place on the eye spectrum, it's a much lighter on the eye. So you, if you're wanting to stay out there for three, four or five hours at a time, and you're behind that eyepiece scanning um, consistently, right? You won't have near as much eye fatigue is what they call it when you come off these, if you're using that red and green monochrome. So you can probably find some YouTube videos of a lot of the guys in the Adder V2 series that are using those and just kind of see if you like those settings or not. Um, but that's kind of it. So we'll get into some more detail when we do a full menu walkthrough. So keep an eye on the page for that. But outside of that, that's kind of all the improvements in the new V3s over the V2. Thanks for watching.